Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FKI Quality and today I would like to talk about the Fishbone Diagram. Let's have an overview of it. The Fishbone Diagram is also known as the Ishikawa Diagram or the Cause-Effect Diagram. And the term Cause-Effect tells us a little bit about what its purpose is. And it is best understood when, you th when we think about the fact that the Fishbone Diagram really seeks to explain a system of causes. When you look at the most basic diagram of a process, right? this, this would be a process, where you have inputs over here, a process or a series of steps that we're taking and the corresponding output, this is also expressed as you know, uh, the letter Y to indicate the output, a transformation function of the various inputs that we get, such as X1, X2, X3, and so on. And so what this really represents is that the process itself is a system of causes. However, these ones are usually, after a little bit of work, seen, they can be observed, we can um, fine tune our eyes to see it, as in, for instance, seeing the effects of waste and what that does in a uh, performance um, metric such as uh, cycle time or lead time or anything like that. So these ones are visible or can be visible after a certain amount of work. However, there's almost like a, like a barrier over here where these ones are uh, invisible or at least harder to know. They might be unknown in the surface, but they, yet they may be still part of the knowledge of the teams. So, it could be part of someone's, you know, or, or a team mental map. And so to a high degree, what we need to do is we need to find a way that we can move from the world of what is visible to the world of what is invisible and what's hidden. Because in here is where we're going to find the root causes of the problems that are impacting our performance. And so the root cause um, tool or the fishbone diagram allow us to do this. And the way to do it is as follows. You would um, indicate over here a system of causes, uh, or rather, you would indicate over here a system of causes but beginning with that that can be seen, so the effect. And the way to uncover, to kind of pull the curtain behind this is by asking the question of why is this a case, you know, and then why is this a case, and like this a number of times, there's even a tool known as the five whys, which uh, basically tells us that we need to ask why something is happening numerous times in order to actually find the true causes. Now, at the same time, Ishikawa tells us, or, or gives us, the, the inventor of this method, tells us that there are certain broad categories that we could use, which uh, will help us classify all the um, um, brainstorming and all the, all the thoughts that we may have. And so he suggests the following. That is that if you have here a problem Y or an effect that you want to analyze, it may be a good idea to look at this as a collection of six possible categories of things or categories of causes. And so this one over here could very well be the materials that are used. With the full understanding that at this point, for many of us, this may also mean the data that we work with. In addition to this, in addition to the materials, it may also be the person. As in, there could be reasons why the person is distracted, why the person is not motivated, where the person is not correctly educated to perform a certain task, which then leads to the problems in, um, uh, written in the head of the fish under a Y. 
Another possibility here, of course, is the machines that this person may use. And for many of us, the machines will also mean the software, the hardware, the cloud services that we may uh, use in order to do our daily work. Then Ishikawa tells us that another, some other categories of causes could be the procedures that we follow, sometimes known under the broad term of methods. This means procedures, this means policies, a number of things that tell us how we must work, which sometimes may constrain our ability to do things in a different way. Not that any of these are necessarily bad, it's just that they may be outdated, uh, and in, in which case, or they may be rigid, in which case they may not result in what we want. In addition to the, to the methods, procedures, policies, we may also have to think about how things are measured. So measurements are also going to be an important characteristic of uh, an important ingredient of the system of, of, uh, of causes. Not only measurements, uh, if you would, of the physical world, which naturally uh, they will be part of this, but also measurements of the social environment, as in um, how are people um, um, measured in their performance and what type of behaviors this is going to lead to. So you have materials, person, machines, method, measurement, and in addition to this, well, we will also have the environment that is created in the place of work. The environment, of course, may also be physical environment, but also to a high degree, the social environment. How we collaborate or not, how we support one another, one another or not. So what Ishikawa does here is gives us, if you would, like a, a classification which has proven to be very useful over decades as to which may be the possible categories of things that may be uh, uh, these uh, invisible unknown causes which could be in our mental map, this system of causes that produce the effect which in most cases is going to be an undesirable effect. So in general, what you want to do is, in the, fir the first few times that you are working uh, using this tool, is to follow the Ishikawa um, uh, standard of classification of causes. Once you become more adept at this and more skilled and more confident, what you could do is simply to have sort of like a, a, a free brainstorming, right, of all the various possible causes for what we see here, paired up with another technique, which is the creation of uh, diagrams of affinity. This is known as a affinity diagramming, which together may create uh, a similar um, uh, Fishbone diagram, if you would, but it may just be more uh, free form. That is, you may have a cause over here, and over here, just a, a collection of different families of, of, uh, of um, <clears throat> uh, ideas that were put together. If you would, uh, quite often we talk about putting ideas on, on uh, sticky pieces of paper so that then we can move them around and all of this, one idea per sticky. And so you could very well have you know, a little cluster of things over here, all of which mean something and have some meaning and all of these ones, they will just simply have their own title, which kind of groups each one of them, and they will represent one family of possible causes. So, to summarize, the Fishbone diagram brings out the system of causes, which is kind of embedded into the way in which we work. And the way in which we work is impacted by numerous factors. Ishikawa suggests these six broad categories. We get to these ones by asking why multiple times. And then another possibility, once we become more uh, skilled at doing this, is just to have some uh, free brainstorming and then an affinity diagram in order to put these ideas together in families of possible causes. And with this, we can um, lead to 
uh, uh, to the um, finding what are the real causes behind the problems that we have and then obviously lead to solving these causes and moving forward towards problem solving and the improvement of our operations. Thank you for your time.